Hi there, it's DJB, and in this video, I'm going to be boxing all of my model horses because I am actually moving. It's kind of a long story, and it's going to make some big changes in the studio, it's going to make some big changes in my life. I have about 20 horses that need to be boxed, and I think they will fit in this soul box. I also have this giant two things of bubble wrap. We'll start with these three. We have the Briarfest Sama Surprise, we have Briarfest Make-A-Wish, I think that's what his name was, and we have a Puku. Good thing I save all my bubble wrap, always. What's happening? Why am I moving? So I grew up small town, and I moved here to the big city to come to school. So that was four-ish years ago. And I had a lot of fun. I went to film school, which led me to work in animation actually for two years. I had a dream to work in film. I definitely made that dream a reality. I was hired at a TV studio originally and then for the last year I've been working in a feature film studio so we've actually been working on a movie that will be on Netflix for I think 2020. Getting hired onto an actual movie was really exciting and that kind of made the whole the whole dream come true. So. Working at this studio has been really great, and it's an awesome studio. They do a bunch of live action stuff, they do a bunch of animation stuff, so it's always bustling. It's a dog-friendly studio, so we've got dogs running around everywhere. My team is really amazing, we have a really good chemistry. Why would I be leaving? Why would I want to leave? I'm in like the perfect job, doing the perfect thing that I've always wanted to do. Well, <laughs> I've realized in this four years that I'm really not a city person. I, I don't thrive in the city. Some people, they love the city. They love being where like the hustle is. They love the action, the excitement, that everything is always going on and everything is always here. And I did enjoy my time early years living here because it was fun to like be able to see famous artists live in concert. It's fun to you know, go out with your friends and there's, you know, always something to do. But I have issues <laughs> with crowds. I really don't like large groups of people. I've always preferred the quiet kind of life. I mean, like I said, I grew up small town. I grew up where you know your neighbor and everybody's friendly. It's places where you can go if you need quiet. And right now, there's nowhere I can go if I need quiet. I've had to live four years without a vehicle because it's too expensive, I can't afford it. I'm living in a basement suite with a roommate. You know that you have to grow in life, but it's going to be really hard for me to achieve my other dreams by staying here. And we have a Mamacita and Chico, the legendary Chaveo. I actually bought recently another Chaveo, so I have to be careful not to get them mixed up. So I have two of these guys. I hate to customize this guy because he's actually flawless, like he's perfect, but I've always wanted a Nakoda to just customize, so this is like my original one, who's a mess, but I'm not going to customize him because he actually has nicer shading. He's got a nicer face. This guy is just like definitely mint. This guy has definitely been loved, but that's why he's special, because he has been loved, and I'll probably end up sacrificing this one to the gods. My long-term goals, obviously, are that I do in fact love horses, I love animals. That was my primary thing. It's the muse of all my art. Like, why am I so obsessed with painting model horses? Why am I so obsessed in drawing horses? Because I love horses. I love animals. I've never liked drawing people. I always said I don't like drawing people because I'm not good at drawing people. But the more I got older, the more I realized that I can draw people just fine. I just don't like drawing people because people don't excite me. People aren't my muse. <laughs> Animals are definitely my muse, but it took me a while to realize that because this definitely was a dream and I definitely wanted to move out when I moved out. Now the longer I stayed in kind of this weird state of really struggling for my money, find a future in a place that is really hard to find a future in. For some people it works and a lot of people I've talked to, it's like these are my coworkers. they don't want a house, they don't want a horse, they don't need a dog. It was just really difficult to come to terms with the fact that even though I love my job and my career is really booming and I could move up in 10 years from now and stay in this career and have an amazing life in this career, I just can't see myself staying in the city and I never wanted to stay in the city. 
but in my head, and as a 14 year old, I was like, this dream will totally work. It'll totally work in this place. The housing market here is the highest in all of Canada. House prices start at like a million dollars for a like suburban house. I couldn't get a mortgage for a million dollar house. Rent is ridiculous. Rent is so high. You have no choice but to live with someone and all of the suites for some reason are very anti-pet. Um, a lot of the houses don't even have yards. The commute to work is long. I'm just not into that. I'm used to small town life where it was 10 minute commute to get to work, to get to anywhere. When you're considering a career, you also have to consider what lifestyle you want. Do you want to have horses? Do you want to have a small acreage? Do you want to commute for a long time? Do you want to walk to work? Like, what kind of life do you want to live that will actually work with your job? And I didn't really think about that that much. I mean, I did, but I kind of ignored it. It'll be fine. I'll like the job so much that it'll be fine. It was for a while, but it wore out really quickly. Now, that being said, I moved away from home when I was 17, so I never really took a break. Spend a summer riding with my mom, working some small job to make some extra money, or even just doing art freelance for a year. That's kind of the reason that I'm moving. It wasn't like something I just like woke up one day and was like, I'm done with this. It was like a long time coming. Like, I'd been thinking about it for a very long time. Uh, Karina and Celine, I guess Premier, these are just the Premier Club models I got. I miss my family. I've been away from my family for a while. It's, it's scary to be so far from them and to just be wishing that I was with them all the time really sucks because we did a lot of different things. We went camping, we went horseback riding, we went mountain biking, we went skiing and stuff. So I actually did try riding lessons here for a while. I rode it at a small little barn that was actually really close to my work. It was very convenient. I was able to walk there because I don't have a car and I rode once a week for 45 minutes. It was good but the people kept rotating in the class. I'm advanced. I've been riding seriously since I was 13. So I know how to walk, trot, can, or horse. And these lessons were very entry level because a lot of the people coming in were beginners so I wasn't learning what I wanted to learn. I want to learn how to jump. I, I stopped for that reason and I stopped because it was very expensive and also the horses weren't really treated well. I know that people keep horses in barns. It's a common thing but for me it just doesn't feel right. All my life our horses were free pasture horses and these horses that this barn I was riding at they were stuck in these tiny box stalls. They went out for their their riding lesson. They had up to six lessons a day. In the summer, it gets really hot. They're getting a different rider every 45 minutes. They're very dead in the mouth. They're very unresponsive. And they were old. The one guy, I think he was 28, and they still had him in the lesson circuit. And these trainers were like, we're looking for a replacement, but we can't find the right one. And granted, if you exercise your horse, your horse can work well into its late 20s. He needed to be let out into a field. There's no fields at this facility. It was simply a box stalls and arenas. And these horses lived for their owners to come and get them, to take them into the riding room so they could at least stretch their legs. They can't give their horses a break because then they'll lose profit in their lesson program. So it just it felt very wrong for me to be there. Passport to Model Horse Collecting, Vahana. I think, I don't know. And then Tuttle Ass and the Jesse. I totally forgot I have like pony pouches. <laughs> now this decision was of course not easy at all because as some of you guys know, I do have a boyfriend. And we met in school, so we've been dating for a little under three years now. I really love this boy. I think that he is the person that I will live my life out with. We, he started in the same field as me. We met in school. We were both these bright-eyed, cheery animators who were like, yeah, let's make this work. But his dream was also to always move away from the city and have a small little house that you can have a family in, raise kids, and have space, and a wood shop, and an art studio, and whatever else your heart desires. That's also his dream. It was this harsh realization of like, wow, we both won't be making very much money. We both won't ever really get there. 
if we stay where we are. He realized that sooner than me, so he actually stopped working and he's decided that he wants to take over his dad's business. His family lives here, so he's been living with them. While he's here still studying, I thought right now is probably the perfect time for me to go. He doesn't know how the rest of his studying is going to go and then he needs to intern under his, under his dad for a while. So he could be another year or so before he can move to a smaller location and start his career. Because he can pretty much work from anywhere. He doesn't need to stay in the city. My job definitely has to stay in the city. I thought this is the best time to, to leave because he's preoccupied with that and then I can kind of explore a little bit. I'm not going to be doing commissions. I'm going to take some time and just work on my own project horses. So whatever I feel, I really want to get better at sculpting. I want to do some drastic customs. I have a whole bunch of bodies to box that I'm going to try and work with. And so job-wise, I'm not sure. I haven't decided if I'm going back to school. I haven't decided if, like, yeah, if I want to do art solely. It's going to be really hard to be away from my boyfriend for some time because he is the love of my life and I don't want to leave him, he doesn't want me to leave either, but my mental health has not been good because of the location I've been living in. So I just, I need to correct some things, I need, I need to do this for me, I need to think about me for a second. And so we're not breaking up and we're not like moving on, we're, we're doing this so that we can better be together later. Work is going to become this dreary thing, whether you love it or you don't. It's always going to have its its rough outcomes, but at the end of a long day, what do you want to come home to that's going to make you recuperate? If nothing does when you get home, you know, you're just feeling even more stressed, it's going to it's gonna wear on you really quickly. Note in, I think this is, and don't look twice, Abba Faro and Bozeman, and then also Matrix. I've almost used this entire garbage bag of bubble wrap. Exciting news is that I actually already bought a car. I bought my dream car. The car is a red Honda Civic, and I've always wanted a red car, so I'm very excited. That's waiting for me when I get there. I just bought that when I went back for Christmas. And then I'm also going on a crazy three week long trip to Rome with my dad. In our younger years, in our beginning years of life, we don't need to know all the answers. We don't need to have everything established and everything figured out. And so if you feel like you need a break, you can take a break. You can take a break now. You can't take a break when you've got three kids, two horses, and a dog, you know? Even then, you know, don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to listen to your heart and say, this isn't working for me. I need a change. I'm going to be able to go to some live shows, I think, too. Which is super exciting because I haven't been to a live show in a long time. I'd love to get some of my customs in the ring. This is Karma. I don't know why I like her, but I do. And then I have Anna Era. And then I have Karen Osa as well. All of a sudden, I was just like, one day, I'm like, I want all the Prada Raven I'm officially out of bubble wrap. That's insane. That was a huge bag. Don't die. See y'all on the other side. Then I have a Peter Stone something, who's kind of body quality. I don't know what I'm going to do with him yet. He's probably going to be destroyed. Then I have a primed Banks Vanilla that needs more prepping. Then I have these three guys, which are bodies. So this guy I've actually already started. I have plans for him. I'm not sure if we'll go through with them. And then I have these two, which I might just get rid of as original finish models, or I might repaint and customize. These guys, which are work in progress customs that didn't get finished. So I guess they're just going to go in here. Anyways, that was fun. Um, don't know what I'm going to do with this guy yet. I'll have to figure it out. So, thank you so much for watching. Happy life deciding. <laughs>